to stand up for the week. Here, with all the news from Middle England, please welcome Simon Evans. Thank you. Good evening. How the devil are you? Well? Very nice to be here with the news from Middle England, if that doesn't mean much to you. Think of it as the polar opposite of gangster shit. <laughs> One of the things I wanted to talk to you about this evening, actually, is, is uh, something which has crossed my radar uh, in the last week or two. Uh, radar is, is like gaydar, but for ships. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using it metaphorically. The general debate in Middle England, uh, you're going to have to take my word for this, I realise as I look around the room, but there is a, a degree of consternation about the degree to which the essentially American tradition of Halloween has overwhelmed the ancient British tradition of Guy Fawkes, bonfire, fireworks and so on. I personally, to be honest with you, I do tend to support fireworks night. I would rather my children were out on the streets blowing shit up <laughs> rather than going door to door begging for sweets like dogs. <laughs> My issue with Halloween, really, is that it's, it's not scary enough. These uh, modern mass-produced costumes don't really set the pulse racing, do they? Back in the day, people used to show a little bit of imagination. This kind of look. <laughs> you can't get that down at Asda. I'm not saying there aren't terrifying things to be seen at Asda. There are, usually bending over a chest freezer. <laughs> trying to extract three-for-two pizzas. <laughs> dressed in a pair of leggings that have seen one too many washes, but you can't actually <laughs> purchase those. <laughs> Pointedly not clapping there, madam. <laughs> you have to put the work in. You can't just go shopping for these things in the local supermarket. My children have embraced this idea. They now use a good deal of creativity and invention when they trick or treat. They have custom-made, bespoke approaches to each house. For instance, old Mr Jenkins at number 14, whose wife died recently. My daughter dressed up in an extraordinarily accurate simulacrum of his wife. <laughs> in miniature, appeared on his doorstep. I'm back! <laughs> Spooky, oh yes. <laughs> then there's Mr Carter at number 42, the uh, local paedophile. He's not... <laughs> it's not proven, but he was a radio DJ in the 70s. There are some... <laughs> Cases where I'm willing to generalise, my children dressed up in sexy clothes for him, turn around and take a selfie before he knows what's going on. <laughs> then, of course, there are a couple of ex-servicemen on my road. To be honest, you don't really have to try too hard with ex-servicemen at this time of year, do you? Rockets, shelling, flares, tracer fire exposing their positions. The two weeks leading up to Remembrance Sunday nowadays in this country are not merely an opportunity for servicemen to remember their active time in the army so much as to relive it. <laughs> it is extraordinary that we put them through that, but then we give them two minutes of peace and quiet on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Bizarre, isn't it? Still, we all wear our poppies, you know, that's the main thing. I think we have to wear a poppy in order to demonstrate you know, our, our allegiance and our solidarity. And I don't know if you're aware of this, but the British Legion uh, do actually raise, they hope to raise about £35 million this year through the sale of poppies. Halloween, on the other hand, costs the British public about £300 million. We spend about three, we spend nearly ten times as much on Halloween as we do on Remembrance Sunday, which is an interesting exposure of our priorities, isn't it? I think the obvious solution, if the British Legion want to raise a bit more money, is to in introduce lollipoppies. <laughs> Instead of a paper version, which an adult buys and pins to his jacket, no, have sweets, which the children have to buy every day for a week. In fact, get lollipop ladies to distribute lollipoppies. <laughs> It's perfect, and if the child refuses to buy one, well, they can take their chances with the traffic, frankly. <laughs> no worse than no man's land was a hundred years ago. <laughs> Teach them some valuable lessons. I am absolutely sure that lollipop ladies would happily embrace the extra authority that this would bestow upon them. They're jumped-up little Hitlers themselves, if you ask me, who seem to enjoy a good deal more sentimental appreciation from the British public than they genuinely warrant. There is one at the end of my road. There is a school near where I live. It's not where my children go to school. I wouldn't have them going to a local school, but there is... 
a school near the end of mine. There is a lollipop lady there who has lost all sight of the priorities. Surely her job is to get at least a dozen kids together into a decent gaggle before she leads them across like some low-rent Moses. No. <laughs> one, one child now seems to warrant her interference. Stop! A child wishes to cross the road. <laughs> Slam the brakes on, coffee goes everywhere. You probably end up sending a text you were only halfway through writing. <laughs> Flask wedged under the clutch pedal, mayhem in the car. <laughs> Just so this infant can dawdle across. You've got a great pole with a bat on the end, twat the little fucker across the road if he's in such a hurry. <laughs> I will leave you with this serious note. Do please buy a poppy. Just a regular one. I am sick to death of celebrity. Simon Cowell, I believe, started this last year with these fancy and sort of gold and ruby encrusted jewellery versions of a poppy, demonstrating that he cares so much more deeply and in such a more celebrity fa Fuck off, Cowell. <laughs> Paper poppies. A simple paper and plastic poppy was good enough for my grandfather, it's good enough for you. I have one for which I paid the suggested donation of a pound in 2009, and it served me very well indeed. <laughs> Looked after properly, they will last every bit as long as a jewellery version. Seriously, folks, have a wonderful weekend. Thank you very much for your time. Take care, all the best. Simon Evans. Now, here to tell us all the first world...